One of the most common rallying cries heard during the current TV revolution has been, television is better than movies, or some variation on that. It's an assertion that's hard to argue with, with soaring audience figures to match their budgets, the quality of the writing and the attraction of Hollywood stars to the small screen, there's a heck of a lot more to watch on the boob tube than down at your local multiplex. TV shows are helped further by the wealth of material they contain. A film has to tell a solemn story over 90 minutes, but the weekly episodic nature of television means that multiple plots and characters can be juggled at once, and not be resolved for years. Those big, sprawling universes leave even more room for interpretation, so naturally fandoms theorise on things that might happen between seasons and speculate on the off-screen pasts or activities of various characters. Some theories end up being so wonderfully outlandish, they are 100% worth your time. I'm Rich from What Culture, and here are 10 insane TV theories you won't believe. Number 10. Donald Duck suffers from PTSD even for a cartoon character, Donald Duck seems especially eccentric and erratic. There's the comical speech impediment, the mood swings, the lust for violence, which all makes sense when you consider his history, which FYI, is all canon. During the Second World War, Disney was just one of the many animation studios that produced cartoon propaganda to entertain and support the troops. Many of those shorts starred Donald Duck as a paratrooper and a commando who saw some pretty intense stuff, as well as a brief period working undercover to kill Hitler from the inside. No medals to deduce that Donald Duck obviously suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder. It usually manifests itself through constant re-experience of previous events, not wanting to talk about it, having difficulty falling or staying asleep, anger and hypervigilance, and significant impairment in social, occupational, or other important areas of functioning. All of which actually describe Donald Duck pretty accurately, don't you think? Number 9. Saved by the Bell is Zack's Dream the pure and innocent tween age sitcom has already been somewhat ruined by the star Dustin Diamond's foray into the porn industry. But before all that, there were the fond memories of the wacky hijinks of Screech, Slater, Lisa, Mr. Belding, Jesse, Zack, and Kelly, occasionally interrupted by a very special episode where one of them gets addicted to caffeine pills and keeps singing I'm So Excited by the Pointer Sisters. The reality of substance abuse is a very scary one. What a lot of people don't know is that many of those characters first appeared on a Disney show called Good Morning Miss Bliss. That series also started Zack, Screech, Lisa, and Mr. Belding, albeit in slightly different roles. Where Zack is the super popular ladies' man of Bayside High School, during his time at John F. Kennedy Jr. High, he's quite the opposite. Girls hate him, none of his schemes succeed, and his pals, Mikey and Nikki, constantly bully him. So why is he so different in Saved by the Bell? Obviously, Bayside is all in Jack's head. The whole show is a daydream about his ideal life to escape the crappy childhood he's actually experiencing. Childhood ruined. Number 8. The Jetsons and the Flintstones exist at the same time. The Jetsons and the Flintstones couldn't be more different. While the Flintstones seemingly live in a prehistoric world where machines are powered by, or in some cases just are, dinosaurs and birds, the Jetsons live in the far-flung future of 2062, a utopian society full of robotic contraptions, aliens, holograms, and whimsical inventions. It's what made the 1987 TV special The Jetsons Meet the Flintstones such a smart idea, a true culture clash between two groups that were like chalk and cheese, both families brought together by a time travel experiment gone wrong. Except, if this insane theory is to be believed, what's the likelihood that instead of opening a portal to the past, young Elroy Jetson just stumbled across a form of teleportation technology that already exists? And the portal didn't reach back to prehistory, but a different part of his own world. Basically, what if the Jetsons and the Flintstones exist at the same time? The basic hypothesis is that the Flintstones live in a post-apocalyptic future as an oppressed lower class. The Jetsons, meanwhile, are a rich upper class with all their fancy technology and the like. The whole thing is actually a sophisticated sociological commentary. Number 7. The government cancelled Firefly and Jericho if there's one thing we know for sure about television, it's that channels just love to cancel cult shows, because cult show is often a euphemism for show with such low viewing figures it's not financially viable to continue making it. Still, try telling that to the obsessives who still mourn the loss of two such cult shows, namely Jericho after two seasons and Firefly, which barely made it through its first. In both cases, the lack of a significant audience was given as the reason the series got the chop, yet there are conspiracy theories about how no less than the US government ordered both Jericho and Firefly to be pulled from the airwaves. Jericho, because its second series revolves around a public rise against the repressive corrupt police state, and Firefly because it features a free trade economy based on bartering and simple living. So Jericho had to go because it would encourage some sort of revolution, and Firefly because it was a libertarian fantasy that would ruin the upcoming election. These are things people actually believe. Number 6. Ash from Pokemon is immortal. 
After running for almost 20 years at this point, despite some costume changes and the addition of a billion more pocket monsters, Ash Ketchum is still the star. He's running around with his boundless enthusiasm, red and white baseball cap and weird lightning bolt marks on his cheeks, having fun, kid-friendly adventures, but he doesn't seem to have aged a day. He started off his journey as a 10-year-old and almost two decades later, he's still a 10-year-old. There may actually be an in-universe explanation as to why Ash Ketchum possesses immortal youth. If you're willing to read in between the lines a little, in the very first episode of Pokemon, he briefly observes Ho-Oh, one of the so-called legendary Pokemon flying over a rainbow and leaving a magical glittering trail in its wake. In the games, Ho-Oh's description includes the promise that anyone seeing it is promised eternal happiness. And what would eternal happiness look like to young Mr. Ketchum? To forever be on a Pokemon journey. And that's why he's forever young. Number 5. Ryan was a police informant in the OC. Starring Ben McKenzie as the inner-city tough guy Ryan Atwood, the teen soap opera opens with Ryan being sort of adopted by rich lawyer Sandy Cohen, who brings the troubled teen to live in the opulent surroundings of Orange County, where he causes trouble and makes friends with Sandy's dorky son, Seth. The state just allows some rich guy to nab a kid and take him home with him? That's... Well, sort of odd. Don't worry though, there's a theory to explain it. Ryan isn't some stray who's been spirited off to a better life. Nope, he's a police informant infiltrating the seedy underbelly of Southern California. Kristen, Sandy's wife, is the real troublemaker. Her family makes illegal financial investments, they have secret love children they pay off to keep shtum, engage in extortion and blackmail, and suddenly, as soon as Ryan turns up, they start getting arrested. Coincidence? We think not. Number 4. The Breaking Bad Colors Theory People have a lot to say about the use of colour in Breaking Bad. The theory goes that colour is very, very important in Breaking Bad. It's not just something that a set designer and costume person throws together randomly, but a calculated effort to foreshadow certain events before they happen. Yellow tends to represent the meth business, appearing anytime something druggy occurs. The boiler suits they cook in, basically everything Gus wears has yellow in some form, Marie is wearing yellow and Hank realises Walt is Heisenberg, etc. Purple is Marie's usual colour, with the Schrader house being almost exclusively decked out in it. Orange means danger, as in the colour Gus wears when he box cuts a guy's throat, and the uniforms worn by all the prisoners Walt orders to be shivved, where pink represents tragedy, as in the raggedy bear that falls from the plane wreck, which led many to expect a sticky end for the white baby daughter, Holly. Number 3. Gilligan's Island is Hell Gilligan's Island is something of an institution, one of the earliest high-concept sitcoms which, despite only filming three seasons, has lived on for multiple generations in repeats and syndication. It's also party to some of the weirdest theories concerning a television series we've yet seen, which is pretty impressive given that it's a fairly harmless, family-friendly show about a bunch of folks just trying to muddle along in difficult circumstances. It was the lost of its time, except with less hatches and more jokes your nan would like. Some have suggested the ship and its crew were actually drug-running when they fell victim to a tropical storm, but even more nefarious Curious than that is the suggestion they didn't actually survive said storm. In fact, the island represents hell itself, with each of its inhabitants representing one of the seven deadly sins. But how does Gilligan figure into all of this? Well, he's the one who seems to be keeping them from leaving the island, and he's almost always dressed in red. We'll let you figure that one out for yourselves. Number 2. The Walking Dead is Toy Story 3 Abandon your cynicism for just a moment, open your mind to talking action figures, and soon you'll be buying into this theory that the third film in the franchise has an almost identical plot to The Walking Dead. Seriously, if you want to spoil the show for yourself, you need only look to the third act of The Breakout from Lotso's totalitarian daycare regime. Or do we mean the governor's deceptive jail paradise? There are a lot of eerie parallels between the two stories which couldn't look more dissimilar. Both saw a sheriff leading a ragtag group of misfits, his best friend is a hypo-macho officer of the law, Shane and Buzz, who he wrestles with under a a truck and wind up in a seemingly idyllic gated community that's run by a guy with a southern accent and a fondness for giving speeches on trucks, but all is not as it seems. Admittedly, it does sound crazy, but when you look at all the evidence laid out like that, it actually makes a lot of sense. Number 1. Top Gear Specials Destabilize Parts of the World On Purpose the politics of the Clarks and Hammond and May days of Top Gear were a little iffy to say the least. The show became better known not for the reviews, but for the challenges which more or less took up the show's entire running time as the series progressed. Because watching a few Burks try and modify some totally unsafe road vehicles to sail across the sea to France is much more entertaining than knowing how fast the new Fiat sedan goes. In one instance, the trio set off on a feature-length Middle East special where they attempted to retrace the biblical journey of the three wise men in second-hand two-seater convertibles that cost less than £3,500. Later, they went on 
on a trip through Ukraine in compact hatchbacks to see who could run out of fuel faster on the road between the city of Kiev and the Chernobyl exclusion zone. Yes, there were plenty of jokes in bad taste, but look at the common denominator in both of those specials. Six months after they sped through Syria, the country collapsed into civil war. Not long after visiting Ukraine, all that nasty business with Russia started kicking off. They even had a little jaunt to Egypt around the time of the Arab Spring. What if the show is nothing more than a front for the Brits to destabilize parts of the world? It certainly seems to be working, but also we don't want to live in a world where Jeremy Clarkson has that much control over significant events. That's... Th that's terrifying. And that's our list. What other ridiculous theories do you have regarding your favourite TV shows? Let us know in the comments section below. News, lists and articles await over on whatculture.com and don't forget to follow us on Twitter here. I'm Rich from Whatculture and I'll see you soon.